Um, so for this coming next week, my theme is rotate your hips. So there's two, two sides to that, I think, in my mind, and I'd love to know what you hear, rotate your hips, what you guys think, but the two sides of it in my mind are, um, there's the rotating your hips enough in stance, for example, rotating the glute medius, the piriformis and glute medius into position to kind of plug that hip into the position that it needs to be in to then drive the lower limb into the right alignment. So there's that kind of rotate your hip. And then there's the actual rotate, rotate your hip, like get enough range of motion in the hip, circling the hips, um, opening the hips, uh, that sort of path as well. So I did a hip opening in the stretch and strength class that now Kim is teaching. One week I did a hip opening class and I got amazing feedback just on that hip opening. And most of hip opening was really like rotational work, rotational stretching on the hip um, starting out with some stability. I always like to start with stability before I go into any mobility and movement because I feel like then people can control the stretching that they're doing, not just be floppy, loose and hanging in their ligaments. Um, so there's that, there's those two sides to rotate the hip that I really like. I like, and I think in a week of working on that topic, you have time to really cover both sides of it. Do you guys have any thoughts on that, that idea or any other ideas that come to you when you think of rotating this? Okay. So um, maybe I will take you through, I think the harder concept is not the one so much. Well, okay, we can talk about, there's a ton of ways to stretch hips into rotation. So we can go through a bunch of those. But I think the harder concept is actually the one about stance and getting the alignment and stance right and using the glute medius properly. And, and that leads from, I, I allude to it this week in the fix your foot, because honestly, if your hip, right, we've talked about this before when we talked about hip too, if your hip is checking out to the side, but if that glute medius, medius doesn't hold and your hip checks out to the side, that foot is going to flatten into the ground, right? Your foot will drop, knee turns in, foot will drop in. You guys probably know what that in your mind already what that looks like. So that rotate your hip comes back to that theraband that we wrapped around our foot and wrapped up in a spiral around the glute and rotating that hip into position. So the things that impede that from going correctly are strength and mobility. Did Zaina freeze? Strengthening glute medius is really helpful to get people up aligned over their leg as well. So that's piece of mm -hmm. Zaina, you keep freezing. Oh no. <laughs> to get that bandwidth fixed right you're back but you're on mute sorry I saw myself freeze i saw you all freeze and then i was like that must be me again <laughs> all right so um i think i was saying that sometimes the glute med the glute is important having enough mobility is important and that will help ultimately get the whole lower limb in alignment. So that's basically what I was saying. So um, you could argue starting with activating glute medius to get that hip going, or you could start arguably start with stretching the hip to get that going, because if you don't have enough flexibility, you won't get on the leg. If you don't have enough strength, you won't get on the leg. So there we go, both sides. Uh, 
So on Matwork, I don't know if you guys have a preference. Does one sound more challenging than the other? What are your, as far as your knowledge base goes, how do you guys feel about that? Hip and rotation. And I'd be curious about, we've got the, the echo again. Um, I'll just, I'd be curious about finding the mobility for yes. Is that still like figure four stretching or is there some other sort of mobility that you would be doing? Yeah. So I've played a lot with the glute media stretching um, because some people get a good stretch in a figure four and some people don't. And so there are so many, and I've actually seen you, Genevieve, doing other stretches too um, there that get the whole hip rotator. So let's go over those all first. Um, the, the one that I don't love so much is the pigeon stretch, full pigeon stretch, because that is so uneven on the SI joint. And no matter how good you get at doing that, it still is really hard to keep even. So I think it's appropriate for people who don't have SI joint issues, who are working towards the right alignment, but I don't think it's appropriate for everybody, for sure, and definitely not somebody who's unstable in the SI joint. So here's, uh, let me push this back a bit and I'll show you just a few um, different variations. So the, um, oh, sorry, my heater's in the way. It's cold out here. Okay. <laughs> so we have our classic, right, the classic figure four, which would be basic version this way. And then we would have pelvis grounded, right? That's really key, both bones on the floor. And that's ideally where we want it to be all the time no matter what we get for this figure four stretch. The second step up would be foot against the wall or against something in that stretch, trying to press this knee open right, to get that stretch into this hip rotator and glute region. Right, so that would be a sort of our class. Oh, and then we could do hands thread through, elbow pressing open. But here, now we start playing with the fact that as we pressure that knee open, the pelvis a lot of times wants to rotate. So you want to keep pelvis down, hands behind the knee, and letting that knee open, right? So that would be that, but I really need to keep this square. So some people get a good stretch here. Other people don't, actually. Uh, so there's a lot of adjustments that can be done. I'm going to switch legs just so I can show you what I'm doing with this leg. So here, I could slide this foot into the, towards the crease more, and that might change the stretch somewhat as well. So I could get more stretch through the glute potentially here. The other things that start becoming, allowing me to get more stretch, are if I start adding some rotation. So I can stay in this position and start to add a little rotation. Now here, I'm gonna switch again so you can see what my back's doing. I'm allowing my pelvis to come up. Right. I'm allowing my pelvis to come up a bit. I'm supporting this leg. I'm not just flopping. I'm staying in control and allowing that. This now brings the stretch up into here a little bit more for me. Um, and the lower that foot is towards the crease of my hip, the more I feel that stretch coming on in the glute buttock region. Yeah, so this is an another way to just accentuate. And so I haven't changed much. The only change I made from this position is lowering the foot towards the hip crease. And if I'm not still getting enough stretch, I'm now going slightly over to the left side. So it's right foot cross, left side going over. So that, these are, those are some ways to stretch, to get a little more stretch. The other version is to cross all the way over. Sometimes doing it this way, pulling the knees in will help people get a stretch. Then if you rotate towards the side, away from the side of the closer cross leg. So now it's my left leg crossed over and I'm rotating over to the right, for example. Now I can get a little bit of a different stretch. I'll switch so you can see. In 
my butt up here. I'm feeling a little bit different kind of stretch as I go into that rotation. So now I'm allowing my back to leave the floor here. So those are all good ways to get the stretch. The other one, and actually one of my personal favorites is, um, and I'll show you the variation on it, is if you work up your way into hamstring stretch. So hamstring stretch also right, is opening the, the hip region because of where the hamstrings insert, right? Remember into that ischial tuberosity. So this would already be a, a good stretch to have going on when you're looking at hip uh, rotation and mobility. And then we also do this one, right? A lot of most of the time with the leg down, coming across a bit and getting that, trying to get the lateral leg. Now some all the way and down actually creates more stretch for me. You could do this with a band, you could do it with your hand on your foot and then rotate that. Now you can see the problems that this could have that this could have for somebody with a low back injury or um, somebody with rotational contraindication for some reason. This is not going to be ideal, but this really helps open through the TFL region and the glute region both. So this this for me is where I have to go sometimes to get a really big stretch through. So um, if I went this way to show you that my leg would be up and then going across. So you can see I'm really um, I'm really rotated, and then I would work to sit this butt hip back down the other way, and I could rotate and open the trunk. So this is not it for everybody. This actually feels like it opens. Sometimes can even help open QL if that's tight too. So if for the right candidate, that's a good stretch too. Then the one that I was saying I've seen Genevieve also do is crossing legs over and then bringing the legs up, pulling the feet um, kind of wide apart. So my knees are crossed over each other and then I'm pulling here. Now I'm getting a really good stretch in my top legs buttock region here. And if you were to sit the tail back down, which I wasn't doing initially, but now, then you actually get a little bit more stretch with that too. So this could be a really good one. Right, so top front leg, tilt over, that's the leg that's going to get more stretch, pulling the feet open to try and get them at 90 degrees and then towards the floor. And then there's our happy baby, which we Deal of this and this is from yoga, right? It's coming into this. So here I'm trying to get my knee, a half one would show you. And I'm trying to get my knee towards my shoulder, taking that foot down, but also trying to fight the urge to curl too much. So it's opening the leg more and sitting the bottom down that we want. We do, I use this a lot on my Cadillac, sprung from below. So that really can help get those hips unlocked and the SI joint unlocked. So it's kind of a nice one for that. So those are the ones that I play around with with clients uh, on their backs. The one, since I don't like the pigeon, the one I actually do like is the double pigeon. And so I, or even um, sitting, uh, so seated, bringing the knees, Feet together, knees open. So a lot of people, this is really challenging. Um, so this is another great hip opening type of stretch or hip rotation kind of stretch here for people wherever they are with it. So however close they can get their feet, however low the knees will go as they open in this position could be a really good stretch. Mm -hmm. And then the so this could be one stage with the double pigeon takes that, that whole thing a step further. So it takes the leg, ideally, and now you're gonna see how tight I am. This is the one that gets me every time. But ideally, it's uh, in a straight line, right? Not bent in towards my crotch, but straight out in front. And then I take the other leg and I place it on top, also straight parallel over. So my heels are not coming in towards my bottom. And then I'll let this knee so she's brought down. Genevieve's doing a much better job of this than I am. 
But this really helps rotate open. I find if I sit here for a little while, eventually things go down, but it takes a lot of breathing and self desire <laughs> for me. So Jennifer is not a great picture of it. A great example, I should say, she's not a picture. <laughs> and then you could switch sides. Crossing there and then watching that one come down as well. So that's really nice to help open the hips as well. Yeah. So eventually, one day, my knees, some days my knees will go down but after a while, but today not so much because I'm having a tighter day. So those are all the kind of my favorites uh, as far as stretching goes. Then we have what we were talking about last time was all the leg circles, hip circles. We talked about that when we talked about hip a couple weeks ago. Those the hip circles really lubricating the joints, being really helpful um, for that. So that we talked about on the reformer, you use the foot straps on the springboard, you use the foot straps, and what do we do when we're on the mat? And that could be single leg circles with a theraband or single leg circles with your hips on the roller. Uh, any of those things really help just get the lubrication of the joint and that rotation in motion, not so much about the stretching as it is about lubrication and, and definitely could be about increasing mobility. So if you give somebody enough support, they can create more motion and more mobility at the hip, right? So the straps give that support for the weight of the legs, allowing more. Um, the foam roller under the hips could help with that. And so could a TheraBand. So do you guys want to review those or do you feel good about those? I feel pretty good about pretty those. Good. Yeah. That's sort of the consensus. Just a bit concerned to see. Yeah, everyone feels pretty good about those. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, I, feel, I feel pretty good about those. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, so I think those just being sort of a nice warm up and then getting into deeper and deeper stretching could be good. Oh, and I just was re remembering, I looked at Allison and I remembered a while back, Allison showed us the mermaid uh, with the rolling out and in. Now the mermaid, even sitting in the mermaid is um, also a good hip opener. We've got now internal rotation and external rotation happening on the legs. And if you wanted to work more on the hips, you could slide that front leg out a little bit to get more uh, alignment of that shin going parallel. That's going to be a little more intense on the hip. And then this one you could work on. You just need to make sure that the knee isn't playing a part uh, of being irritated by this position of this hip. So, but this does get some motion or some internal rotation at the hip, which we haven't done anywhere else. So this could be in doing a mermaid or a st stretching series here, it could be a very um, discreet way or secret way of getting the hips a little more open and internal rotation. So that could be a nice one to just do some mermaiding, some overhead stretching, and then getting the hip um, to sort of open up as you go through mm -hmm. too. So, um, so yeah, I think those are a great handful of nice stretches you could do. When we get up to talking about the foot and knee, right? that's the stacking over. And so Kim, I might use you as an example because yesterday we were doing the rehab course um, and Kim was such a lovely volunteer to be my example person. And I was picking on her doing scooters. So I think you guys know enough. I don't think I have to show you again the stacking your hip over the pelvis, but just really super brief, just to put it in your head, right? We are looking at um, taking the hip, wrapping it in underneath, right? And what that does to the whole knee foot complex going down the chain, right? So that stands on this leg with the hip in alignment, aligns my hip foot knee, right, nicely. Now, when there's weakness, either in the foot if the foot drops, my whole, you can see, I have a slight rotation now happening on this stance leg. And my kneecap, which maybe you can't see, I will expose. 
Okay, so this is, I, I was just here in this nice upright straight aligned place. And all I'm doing now is dropping my foot. I drop my foot and I get a little bit, it's subtle, but I get a little bit of an internal rotation and I feel that I'm coming across a little bit. So if I keep my foot up, but I drop my hip, that's what it looks like. So I just went from foot now lifted, body aligned, to hip check side. So my knee actually stayed forward, even a little bit outward. I'm a little more on the edge of the outside edge of the foot, but now my hip is still not in underneath me. So when we talk about standing rotation of that hip, we're talking about bringing it up and under. And the hard part of this, even when people get this here standing, is if there's any weakness, when they go to bend the knee, this happens. Right? So now my foot flattened and the knee went slightly inward. So this was, and the hip outward. So this was happening a time exaggerating, a tiny bit to Kim's right leg yesterday in class. And so what I couldn't get my hands on her because she's over there and I'm over here. So what I would have wanted to do is take this hip, rotate it in its socket. So pick up and put that hip forward, even if it meant coming back up to standing, and then just release the knee out from underneath. Right? This is that exercise, the side sleeper, hip height exercise with the knee bent pulses. Do you guys know which one I mean? We go out in side sleeper. Right? In side sleeper, we start that series. Um, this foot on the foot bar presses, right? Marching presses. And then we do turned out presses. And then we put our heel flat or our foot flat against the bar and we do that hip height. So that essentially what's happening is this, this one is lengthening into the bar. And then I have sometimes, not all every time, I have people hold that and try and bend their knee without losing the placement of that hip. So there's little knee, bent knee pulses inward. So what that looks like if we took that to standing is being able to stay stacked on this hip and then release my knee. So nothing changed in the alignment of this leg, right? I just released the knee. So that is the hard part. So when you go to a single-legged exercise, like what we were doing yesterday, the rehab course was, was scooter on the reformer. So that, and the stance leg, I which one's better for you this way maybe, or maybe straightforward. The stance leg was Kim's right leg. So she was standing here. This foot was on the reformer. We came into this position. What kept happening a little bit was this. So, and then she was pushing back. Right? So I kept, we were working on getting that arch up, the knee rotated over, and the hip rotated under her so that she could press here in that nice, correct alignment. So that's rotating the hip into position or locking it into that position here um, to get it underneath here. Does that make sense? Do you guys have questions about that in particular? What if it just naturally, my knee just goes in? <laughs> Yeah, so some people are a little genuvalgus, right? Yeah. But I don't, I don't think you were particularly, I could actually see your hip rotating slightly forward on the right. So I don't, I couldn't see your foot though. That was the thing I couldn't really see. So what we did to create a correction from a distance for Kim was I actually had her turn her foot out a little bit. So that as her foot was turning out, I was hoping that her knee would follow. And then if her knee followed, I was hoping that her hip would follow. And so she would end up in a straighter position. So you can mimic that in a lunge, for example. If we, I, um, do you guys have any other questions about that? Or should I just go with this? I just have a cue that I use. I don't know if it's helpful for people. Yes, tell us. <laughs> um, so, whether in an alien position or, um, I guess it works better first. I tell people to aim the sit bones 
back toward the other foot. And like points it back that way. And sometimes that helps kind of wrap the loop into place. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. Anyone else have another way? I, I don't have any, um, oh, I'm getting the echo now too. <laughs> I don't have a particular excuse, but I do have that thing in the digital with the leg. And um, I'm always really concerned that it's kind of hard to see here with any of my clients as well. Every time I put them in parallel, um, if they're going to be bending, tend to see a little bit of this sometimes if they're really focused so I keep it over their toes. I will turn the just a little bit, even though they're supposed to be in the position. Okay, Zaina, why don't you go on mute? Why don't you go on mute while everybody's talking? Other people are talking. Okay, yeah, them. sure, sure. So what did you say, Allison? Okay, so um, all I was saying was that um, I have that the genu valgus that, that she was talking about. And um, so anytime I'm doing any work, um, and if I have a client that has the same issue, any work where you're supposed to be in parallel, especially standing on the floor, I'll always have them take their feet out just slightly because otherwise when, when they're straight, when your feet are straight and you have this angle, then your knees automatically want to come together. Part of that can be a little bit of um, a weakness in the hips but it's, or in the inner thighs, but a lot of times it's just, that's just the angle. And mine's not as pronounced as some of the others. So if you take them into a slightly more turned out, so if this is parallel, you take them just an inch to either side, it will correct that until they get stronger. Do you agree? Yeah, so I think the, I think a good, well, that's exactly what we, what I was trying to do for Kim. What we want to try and do is get them into the right alignment at the hip and then hope that that will help sort itself out. Now, if it is a true structural, so if it's a if it's a decent, like Alison was saying, she doesn't have a lot of genu valgus, so it does seem to work a bit. So it will work for people who don't have a lot of a bony genu valgus. It'll work really well on people who have a very soft tissue genu valgus because of weakness. So once then it really works because as soon as you put them in that turnout, you're just helping the hip rotators fire a little bit in external rotation. And then you could slowly work to put them back in parallel, keeping that feeling. Um, so I think it would work for them. For people with a really big structural genu valgus, it's not gonna do that much difference, but it might help them get a better sensation of where to be for knee alignment. However, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to correct that, but we can help them not hip check out to the side, right? So we can really get on them and not allow a hip check, even though the knees travel inward a little bit. So oh, there's a kitten just ran across my yard. <laughs> okay, so um, yes, I like that point, Allison. That's what we were trying to do with Kim. The other one I'll add to Genevieve's idea. One of the ways that I've also been working on this is by having people and, we, and I actually did it today with the foot thing too, is have the squishy ball really high up in their crotch and have them try and squat with that after they get that. So I can show you, um, if I take, I'm cutting off my head a bit, that's okay. If I take this squishy ball and I put it way up high, and I need to put it way up there, I can squeeze inward and I can find that without actually rotating. So I've got my feet straight forward. I've got the balls of the big toe and the pinky toes all on the ground. I can squeeze inward and wrap, but not actually move. But I feel the wrapping happening. And I think you can see it in my legs as the ball sort of squishes a bit forward. 
And rather than just pressing the ball in, I'm wrapping. And so as I wrap, the ball goes forward. And, and I, you can probably see that back here, I get all fired up and on. So I get a lot of activity, but I haven't had to rotate my feet open to get that rotation. Now, if I could keep that rotation, I could take it into a squat and pay attention to where those knees are. So it's less likely that my knees are going to go together. Oops, I should face forward, sorry. This way, I'm losing the ball out the back, right? But if I keep my wrap and go down, the ball stays right there and my knees stay forward and then come up. Does that, have any of you guys tried that or feel what that feels like? It's really nice, I think. So it keep, gets you wrapped. It really helps me. It helps me most because I have flat feet, right? So it really helps me find that um, arch and keep it even as I squat. And then I don't have to worry. My knees just automatically sort of align in a good way. Let me try that. See what you think. So it's that wrapping around. The ball feels like it's squashing forward some, and then I'm going down and back up. Yeah. And so from there, that's it. From there, I take them into a lunge, and I keep the ball way up there. And this is where my is to help me keep the hips both forwards. So a lot of times it's not a lunge, we're turning open. And if I keep all this forward, then I keep pressure on the ball and I keep pressure from my back leg forward and my front hip backward. She's gone again. Dana, come back. Yes, okay. Oh, I don't know why this is happening today. I'm so sorry. Can you guys Okay, hear me? just the state of the world today. What's that? Oh, I said it's okay. It's just the state of the world today. <laughs> This is my, and it keeps kicking me off the internet that I'm on, onto some other internet. I don't know why. Okay. I was just about to have you lunging too. You must not like my lunging so much. Okay. So let's try that again. I'll try to explain. All right. So here, that's forward. Oh, I didn't get it turned sideways. All right. So forward, both hips. Then I can keep that alignment and I can allow this down. So now it's really nice and easy. When this hip is pulling inward and straight, I have a really easy time keeping that knee aligned over the foot and that hip in the right rotation line. So I'm really focused on this foot, digging this heel and pulling this hip back and under me. And then up and that ball. Uh, can help. Yeah, a big pillow could help too if you don't have a ball. But that can help so that I don't end up doing this because then if I go down, my knee crosses my foot, right? As soon as I open that hip too much. So it's a lot more knowledge, I think, at work to go straight down, keeping that knee straight over and keeping that hip underneath. So you can experiment with that ball being there. If you guys want to try it, I'll watch you if you wanted to do it, um, if you want to and see, I can mute myself so you guys can talk too.
I'm unmuting myself, sorry. Allison, I was gonna say, see if you can take that back, the front leg forward a little bit more and the back leg back. You, you may not be able to hold on to the ball because you have thin legs. <laughs> But the idea is that back leg is really perpendicular um, to the ground. So very vertical on that back knee, right? And then um, Genevieve, I might take the back leg back a little bit more. Yeah, and then really dig the heel in on that front leg and see if you can keep, that's it. That's it, Allison, that was right. Don't worry about the ball falling out, but that was right. Yeah, um, like I said, that's where my voluptuous thighs really help me out, makes me look really good. That I can do it, but <laughs> but thinner legs have a harder time holding on to it just because. Uh, but the idea is that 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 back leg is very vertical, and the front hip is very pulled back and into place, so that both ASIS are pointed forward at the same time. And it really seems to keep that alignment good. Yeah, go ahead. I'll mute myself so you can talk. So would it work with a band? Um, like if, cause unless I get like a much bigger or a much squishier ball, there's no way I'm going to be able to hold the ball there, but would a band work against it? Or, I mean, I don't, I'm just trying to think of a, another way to do that with some of my clients that were their hips. What about a yoga block? Ooh. Okay. I'll try that. Let me grab a yoga block, but I it, would a band, is a band like not going to work there because it's working different muscles or? Where yeah. would you put the band? Um, like up here. I could try it. I'll go, I'll mute myself. I'll go get this. Other people can ask questions. What do you think, Genevieve? It's um, it's a very different feeling because instead of in and together, it's out. But it could probably help to stabilize. I don't know. Sorry, I'm watching what Allison's doing now. <laughs> I'm wondering if you wanted to use a band, if we would change the, the thought a little bit. And, and I've used this with the springboard bar too, where you would take the band and have it hooked behind you or the bar across your hips in the front. So unfortunately, I don't have a springboard to show you, but I can show you the positioning. So the band would essentially go, across the front of the hips here or the springboard bar. And then you could work into that lunge, keeping the bar is kind of nice actually, but you could, if the band was behind me, I could work to try and keep that band level and that resistance on both hips. And then going down and up. So that might be an interesting way to keep the hips forward because the idea is to keep but the thought is to keep the ASIS forward. But I do have to say, I do like the inward pressure and the wrap because that the ball gives as a starting place. And then maybe going to having something across the front of the hips that would keep, make you push the hips forward. Yeah, having a split. <laughs> okay. So having just done it, I can say you're definitely using more outer thigh than inner thigh with the band, um, which makes sense. It did keep me a little more square than nothing, than not using anything, but, um, but in terms of getting that wrap feeling and using more of the inner thighs to lift um, all the way from the um, arch up, it's not gonna do that. So answered my own question. I think it's good to experiment with all these different ways though, because I don't think there's a necessarily a right and a wrong. 
and playing with different people's bodies is really a great, or different, looking at different bodies and different body types are gonna have different things that work for them. So I think it's all great information. Um, the other thing that might help with tracking, and I actually did this a lot when we were doing a lot of TRX, which we're not doing so much now because we're not in studio, but the, the, you could do it without, I did it the other day without, as I was torturing myself, and um, I made myself sore for like three days, couldn't walk very well, it was pretty funny, but one of them was to take that lunge instead of doing a straight lunge, it was to take it into this curtsy lunge, right? So this then asks for that rotation in while the knee and foot stay in alignment here and back up. So you could do it just staying on one side, going down and up, or you could take it alternating sides down. Now it's a lot of work, it keeps the, and you have to watch that knee over foot. There is that external rotation, but if I keep that hip in, it's a manageable amount of external rotation. I have to say it's easier with the TRX for sure, but it is, um, if you have the TRX, you have some support from above, hoping you move through. Ooh, I would not fall over. <laughs> But it's an interesting thought idea, maybe, to play with, too. I'll let you guys. So oh, is the, uh, the front leg, the alignment, is the toe pointed? Sorry, you can't see me. Um, <clears throat> Is it pointed forward or is it pointed, is it in turnout? The foot itself. So if I was to take it from here, the foot itself is forward. But once I go here, the whole, the whole part rotates. Yeah, so I have to counter that with keeping this knee over the foot. So it looks like the foot's turned out, but when I come up and stand, you can see that the foot is parallel, right? So then I go to this side, the knee tracks over that foot, it looks very turned out, but when I come up, it's parallel, yeah? So it's a lot of hip rotation going underneath that way. That's allowing that motion. Fun one, isn't it? That one. <laughs> I challenge you to do 10 minutes of that in a row and see how you feel tomorrow. <laughs> my foot, my foot decided it wanted to turn out. It just did my front foot. It just turned out. hard to keep in parallel. I think it is hard to keep it in parallel, actually. It takes a lot of work and a lot of control. So the first few times I was working on it, it my foot would just want to slide open into turnout. But I think trying to keep it in parallel is a good practice. And that keeping it in parallel while the hips tucking under is where you're getting a lot of work in that glute medius. So it's really similar to that chair, the chair exercise where we cross over in front where you're standing and the other leg is pressing down, but across the leg, that's the very similar feeling. Yeah, so can I give you be careful? <laughs> but, yeah, so the, that's the idea though, is that the foot stays parallel and then the hip tucks underneath. Um, I can already feel just from those few that I got uh, I got a little good zap of work right in the, oh, you can see, right in my glute medius right there, just from those. So really fire them up, turn them on. Yeah. Um, I also, I'll just throw it out there and then I'll give you guys a minute to ask a few more questions, but Genevieve was stretching out her SI joint earlier. 
and she was in a really deep squat down towards the floor. This the little like full squat down and the yeah there she's again. So that position I find is a really great position to work on as well for the hip and rotation. And then I always take a while to warm up into it, but the feet turning more and more parallel as you get more comfortable in the position can really help open and rotate and strengthen in this low range. And so this is just a great place to be. And this is too intense. Doing this up on the Cadillac with the bar is a great way. Also, you could have people start it with something underneath their heels. That makes it quite a lot easier if there's a block or something underneath the heels here. It makes it a lot easier to start with, but then working their way down so that they're able to hold it here. And then working up from here, it seems impossible at first, but then going, but then after you've done it a few times, it's really not that hard to go up and down through that full range. So that one, I love training people for that one, um, for the hips, especially because in Marin, we have so many people hiking in the woods on really long all day hikes. And so squatting in the woods is all part of that, right? And so being able to, I've had some of my clients, I'll never forget that we had a good laugh one time because when I was like, I've got to be able to squat in the woods so, and I can get down, I just can't get back up. So <laughs> we worked on squatting in the woods, right? So um, anyway, so that's another great one to throw in there just for longevity also. There's a lot of research about squatting and longevity. So that's always a great one. So I'll let you guys throw out any other comments, questions. I've been doing a lot of squatting, wide squatting in the bone strengthening class as a way to help them um, understand that's a way to get down to pick something up, right? Rather than bending over. So um, it's, a, it's a journey for me too, <laughs> hard. <laughs> So question again, uh, the wide squat, I was just doing that. And um, anytime I'm doing those, I always find that I'm in a uh, pretty wide turnout. Um, bringing it back more to parallel was a little painful, like right around the knees. So I is that a product of weakness or a product of um, me probably not probably shouldn't do that because of the angle of the Q angle of the hip. Um, and should I do that with other clients? My gut instinct is, well, my gut instinct says I want to fix it as much as I can. So I want to push the boundary as much as I could, but I definitely don't want to push that into a pain at the knees. Um, there is, you know, it'd be nice to work into deep squatting and just see how, if you haven't been deep squatting like that, and then you start going right into deep squatting, it's a lot of compression at the knee anyway. So I'd probably just start doing some in a comfortable position, comfortable alignment, and then really slowly start working the feet in a little bit. But the knees and the feet have to be able to both go in. So if the knees can't go in at all, then you wouldn't take the feet in at all, right? So you just want to really maintain that foot and knee alignment as you work your way a little bit more parallel. Yeah, so that, that would be my best recommendation. I just had a question about the, um, the deep, the squat. And uh, well, the one that's like, uh, what do they call it, Malasana and yoga. I mean, I can't do that. I used to be able to do that, but because of my adductor tear attachment, I, there's no way I can do that. Um, what would be a different modification for that? I mean, maybe on one leg I could do it. I guess I could do one leg happy baby pose, but just suggestions. Yeah. So you can always go back to squatting against the wall or with the roller behind you with your feet out further and then doing mini squats. You could start with a really baby squat and then work your way deeper and deeper into the squat. And if you put your back against the wall, that takes a lot of compression out of the knees too. And um, takes, it will take a lot of muscle work out of the inner thigh initially. So you could just slowly progress your way back in. So it is a ton of work on the adductors and a big stretch. So it's, you're lengthening that adductor at its full 
well, not full, but at a longer way, and then we're asking it to work, which is a lot harder on those fibers that probably were torn. So somebody with an adductor injury will have a hard time rehabbing, but eventually we would hope that you can get into that, in and out of that too. So you would start with that higher squat with little motion and in the turnout, and then work your way lower and lower as it was feeling like you could do that. Thank you. Kim is running away. Um, thanks, you guys. If you have other questions, you can always email me, like like usual, and I would be happy to help. Or any client scenarios or questions, I'm more than happy to help. So, um, yeah, hopefully this was helpful for you, and um, I will look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> Bye.